Hi. Today we'll learn about AWS Lambda layers and look at a tool that lets us quickly build Lambda layers using Docker. This is Raghuveer Varhagiri and you are watching Hands on AWS. Today's agenda includes an overview of AWS Lambda layers and why they are beneficial. And we'll look at an overview of the solution called AWS Lambda Builder. And we'll also look at a hands-on demo of how AWS Lambda Layer Builder works. We will also look at how we can utilize a Lambda Layer in a Lambda function. Let's look at an example serverless application using Lambda functions as microservices. Let's say there is a business application that invokes one of the many Lambda functions through API Gateway. And each of these Lambda functions deals with, let's say, product data on the backend. But each of these Lambda functions has some unique purpose or functionality built into it. At the same time, there is some element of common function or processing of data across these Lambda functions. Let's say all these three Lambda functions seen here retrieve product data from the back backend store and load it into a product class, apply the same kind of validations or transformations before they do anything specific about that. If you have hundreds or more of these Lambda functions that deal with similar set of data structures in the backend, you might end up replicating identical code to handle these common functions across multiple Lambda functions. That's not ideal. The best practice is to typically abstract those kind of common functionalities into a common package or layer and then utilize it in multiple places wherever it is, wherever it is needed. Lambda layers exactly lets you do that by packaging all the common functions into a common module called a Lambda layer and then importing it into multiple Lambda functions. This is similar to how you do it in your traditional software development. This is just a serverless solution to address the same need. What are some of the benefits of using AWS Lambda layers? It lets you organize your code better by creating modules and reusing those modules across multiple places wherever they are used. And this lets you manage versions of the common code and the unique code separately. And one additional benefit of that is the individual Lambda functions that are specific to a purpose become much more lightweight without the bloat of the common libraries packaged into each of these deployment packages. And therefore, you are also able to take advantage of the inline editing that is available on Lambda console only for small functions. Beyond a size of around 3 MB, Lambda console does not let you do inline editing of code. So by removing the bloat of the common packages away from each individual Lambda function, you are able to retain this benefit for most of your code base that you more frequently update. Now, let us look at Lambda Layer Builder solution. On a local developer environment, we run a Docker container and we download the versions of the libraries that we need into that environment and we create a zip package from all those files and that becomes our ready to use package that we can create Lambda layers with. Let us now look at the Lambda Layer Builder solution. It is available on GitHub. The URL is available to you. I have downloaded a copy of that solution to my local machine. Let's go through each of these important files. The Docker file imports from Amazon Linux base image and then runs yum update on top of it installs Python 3.8 and a few developer tools, zip utility, which we'll be needing, latest version of pip, and latest 
version of uh, virtual env which we will be using there is a requirements.txt file which lists all the libraries or packages that we want included in this package right now it says pandas let's also show that we can have more than one package included here so let's save this requirements.txt with two packages pandas and requests look at what install.sh does inside the docker container once we run it we will be running this script which will create a virtual environment named python and activate that virtual environment and inside that virtual environment we will be installing the packages that we specified in requirements.txt in a specific folder this specific folder path is as required by aws lambda to work so please do not change this once that installation is done you will use the zip utility to recursively look at everything that is in this folder called python and then create a zip file archive at maximum compression and name it python.zip that's all there to it in terms of what the solution does let us see the lambda layer builder solution in action you should have docker desktop running on your machine and then you can build a docker image using the docker file that we just saw so let's follow this guide and build an image and call it layer builder image Now you should have an image available to run and you can run it and give it a name layer builder image layer builder. Now you can see that Docker container is running with the name layer builder and you can use it. So we already have requirements.txt with these two requests as an example. Now let us copy this requirements.txt file into the container from the local machine. And once we have it there, we can run the install.sh script inside the container. That will request the two packages that we have asked for and then install that inside the virtual environment there. It should take a minute. all right with that done we can now copy the python.zip that would be created inside the container out into the local host machine you should see a new python.zip pop up in your local machine and once you have that you can dispose this docker container image remove that All right, we are done with the build part. Now let's look at how we can use this python.zip to create a AWS Lambda layer. Let's switch to the AWS console. In the AWS console, let's go to Lambda. Go to layers and click on create layer. Here you Give it a name. Let's say pandas and requests. You can upload from a zip file or from a file in S3. Uh, given the zip file is a little heavy, we are likely to encounter issues during upload. So we can go and upload it to S3. I have created a bucket by name repackaged lambda layers and created a python 3.8 folder in it 
it's uh, recommended that you create a descriptive folder name because you cannot change the name of the file. The zip file needs to be called python.zip. So let's call this pandas and request. And upload our python.zip here. this file uploaded you can copy the URL copy the S3 URI and go back to lambda layer screen and paste it in here and you can select the runtimes that it is compatible with and with that you can create this layer all right the first layer is successfully created and that's how you create a new Lambda layer. Now that we have created a Lambda layer, let us see how we can use that Lambda layer in a Lambda function. Now let's look at how we can create a Lambda function that utilizes this layer. Let's go to functions and create a function. You can see my layer demo. Python 3.8 and create. The function is now created without any layers, obviously. Let's see what happens when we do not have the dependencies or layers and we try to use a pandas or request module. Import requests. I deploy this. And I test it using test event. We test it and we get an error which says no module named request, which can be resolved by either including those modules in the deployment package or adding a layer. So let's add a layer and select from either AWS layers or custom layers. You have a small list of AWS specific uh, packages available that you can select from this list, or you can select custom layers and select the layer that we created. Version one is what we have. So select that and click on add. And now the layer has been successfully added. And with this, you should be able to test this and get a 200 response. So now let's see this in action that we can actually use, not just import, but use the request uh, module for some functionality. Let's say response is, let's use a URL. This one is a demo page, simple HTML that we can use. We can print out the response. And then now deploy this and test it. All right, let's test this. And you have this is the test page, which happens to be the content of this HTML page. Let's confirm that. This is a simple HTML page. So let's also test that pandas, which we included in this layer, also works. SPD. Let's say.
all right there you go you are seeing output from both requests and pandas modules and our demo function using this layer is working and this is super lightweight without 40 MB of packages included in this deployment package just 398 bytes all right this is hands on AWS hope you found that content useful we'll meet again thank you and cheers